and welcome back to Scream With Me. My name is Rusty. Uh, this is me horror and metal music channel um, where I discuss me favorite movies and me favorite bands and me favorite albums from those bands. And now we want to, I want to jump back. I just did the call. Um, now I want to jump back to Oh, the golden age of my babyhood. Um, the great, the wonderful, the ultimate, shall never be unseated, screen queen, Jamie Lee Curtis, and Terror Train. I am so glad to have this movie in my collection. It's not even funny. Terror Train. Jamie Lee Curtis. This movie was released in what, 1980? Yes. 1980. It stars Ben Johnson, Jamie Lee Curtis, and Hart Bachner. And a couple of trivia we'll talk about in a minute. And it was directed by Roger Spittiswood. Spottiswood, not Spittiswood spit his wood did he spit his wood spot his wood roger spot his wood three years after a prank went terribly awry you can say that the six college students responsible are targeted by a masked killer at a new year's eve party aboard a moving train yes first my couple of trivia things this movie has david copperfield in it the magician not only he doesn't just appear he's all through the movie and he actually speaks and he actually acts and he actually gets fucking killed which is cool but he is so darling in this movie he is just a baby uh, so uh yeah david copperfield is in this movie with his cute little self way back um, how old could he have been at this time i don't know i'd have to look it up there but um that's a really cool little trivia to Terror Train for you people is that it's got David Copperfield in it. Now here's another pop culture reference. This movie was the first appearance of Vanity. Now if you don't know who Vanity is, look it up. Uh, Vanity was Prince's girlfriend, the musician no longer the artist formerly known as prince he is prince i never i never really accepted that artist formerly known as prince crap anyway he was always prince he was just showing his ass because he didn't like the record companies which i totally agree with but um prince had um and this was before she met prince okay she went by denise matthews which was her you know real name um and this was the first movie that she appeared in. She's a good actress, and um, it, it's always been thrilling to me to know where she came from. Um, Terror Train has the first appearance by Vanity in a movie. And she, um, if you don't know who she is, she's the one that is dressed up like Cleopatra, Egyptian in this movie. She's all through the movie. She has a decent, she has a decent size role. Um, she's in a lot of scenes with Jamie. So, uh, yeah. But Vanity went on to meet Prince. And then she, uh, he formed a group for them called Vanity Six. You might know the song Nasty Girl. And he's so dull. And um, Drive Me Wild. I love Vanity Six. I have the LP, the vinyl album, in the closet in there. Um, she was the part for Purple Rain. His girlfriend in Purple Rain was written for Vanity. She decided not to do it. She wanted to pursue um, her movie career. So she dropped out of Vanity Six, and she refused to be in Purple Rain. And they instead went and found um, Apollonia Cotero, 
she also replaced her in the band, and the band changed from Vanity Six to Apollonia Six. So there's a little bit of music history for you and a little bit of trivia. If you own Terror Train, you have the first uh, movie role by Vanity. The famous Vanity is in this movie in a very large role. She's a main character in the movie. Um, so that's a cool bit of trivia. Uh, one of the things that I love the most about this, besides it being a fantastic slasher, there's some cheesy moments, but that's to be expected from 1980 slasher yet, yeah? is that um, they didn't try to fuck with you. They could have easily, because anybody that watches this movie and sees the opening scene of Terror Train, which was just the awful joke that they played on that boy, and anybody in their right mind would go, well, of course he's the killer. So he must not be the killer because that's too obvious. So it can't be him because that's too obvious. No, it is him. And I'm glad that they did not, you know, the director, Roger Spottiswood, that, and the writers, that they did not try to fuck with us. Sure, they left it open, you know, for you to go, I wonder if it's him... I don't know, there's a couple of little, you know, things that make you kind of wonder, well, I don't know, is it him? He's acting a little weird. <laughs> um, but I believe that if they had done that, it would have been a cheat to the audience because it's fucking obvious that it's him. It's got to be him. And if it turned out not to be him, I actually would have been pissed. I wouldn't have been like, oh, you got me. Oh, it's the other dude. Um, no, because this is one of those moments when you, I liked being a little bit not sure, but at the same time, I like knowing that they're not going to try to pull some cheap crap with you. And, um, that they're not going to pull some cheap crap with you and try to jerk you around. It is him. It is the boy that they played the, the devastating mental prank on. Well, I don't know about you, but climbing in bed with a dead body and it falling apart on me, there would be a little vengeance in store when I got my chance. And, um... I compared this to another movie that I've done recently. I can't remember exactly which one I did, but I mentioned this movie is that, uh, oh, Ma. What they did to Octavia Spencer and Ma was kind of similar to this movie. A horrible sexual-based prank that scarred her for life, and that's what they did in this movie. Um, the acting was great in this movie, except I always thought that Kenny and Doc, Doc well, I don't know about Doc, but Kenny, if you know this movie, Kenny is gay, try to change my mind. Isn't that the little placard that people use, you know, like, I believe this, change my mind? Uh, but yeah, that's, that's really funny <laughs> in this movie, because Kenny was in love with Doc, and I think it was very obvious that he was so that was a little under subtext under thing going on there but his reaction was really played up to make you go come on you know so yeah the kills were great in this movie they were of course tame by today's standards but uh, that's okay I don't really have to have gore you know I don't like torture gore porn anyway so um, I really loved it. I love the ending of this movie. Just when you think it's all over, it's not. The killer gets revealed. It's exactly who it's supposed to be. Um, she plays it very well. She does what she should do in a situation like that. And I liked that, you know, that she uh, did what I would have done. 
because your ass is grass, so you better think hard about what to do to ensure your survival. And she plays it up, and it trips him out, and he ends up being thrown off the train, off a bridge, and dead, and that's it. So, yeah. Vanity didn't get killed in this. I don't think. I can't remember her getting killed. I can't don't know. I don't think so. If it did, it didn't stand out. Everybody else got killed. Um, but Jamie Lee, of course. So, yeah. This is a classic for a reason. And um, I absolutely adore this movie. Um, I love the actors that were in it. I love Doc. I love Kenny. And I, of course, love Jamie Lee Curtis. Um, I'm glad that she has never, <clears throat> I'm glad that she's never been one of those people who decry uh, their path. I know on another channel, um, a channel called J-Man, he, inter he interviewed a couple of the ladies from uh, Black Christmas, uh, It's Me Billy, the short film that's a sequel to Black Christmas, the original Black Christmas. And I was there at that chat and I, I asked them, you know, if they, would they do more horror movies or were they afraid of being labeled as a scream queen uh, or being stereotyped or pigeonholed? And both of them said exactly what I wanted to hear, which is that, you know, they were both like, bring it on, you know, I will love to be your screen queen. I mean, in this day and age with so much media and so many things, um, finding a place where you will be forever remembered is hard to do. So when I see actors, um, you know, who like turn their nose up and it's like, oh, I don't want to be typecast. I don't want to be this. I don't want to be that. Jamie Lee never did that, and I think that's wonderful of her, that she never, like, that I've ever heard, she's never, like, came out and said, oh, I'm so ashamed of prom night, or I'm ashamed of terror train, or I'm ashamed of Halloween. Um, she's done plenty of other things, uh, but has always stood up and said, I'm not going to be ashamed of my Scream Queen status, because... It's better than being a nobody in a small town. And that's what I'd say to a lot of these actors, you know. I'm like, who the fuck are you? You know, we give you money, you get stardom and fame, and then you turn around and it's like, oh, well, I don't want to do any more horror movies because I don't want to be typecast as a screen queen. And it's like, well, then fuck off, you know. I mean, if you want to go do Broadway or you want to go do some dramas, do that. But don't slam horror movies because you were in it. And I've always loved that she has has worn her crown as a screen queen, along with some others like Linnea Quigley and other people who are most famous for horror movies. Jeffrey Combs, you know, he's never been ashamed of, of his place in horror history. Um, you know, people like that. Bruce Campbell. You know, there's uh, lots of people, though, that like to act a little funky about it, and I can that can irritate me. And Jamie Lee has never done that. So, Terror Train, 1980. It is a classic slasher, one of my top five ever. Um, and it is that for a reason. You just can never surpass Halloween. Friday the 13th 1 and 2 uh, Nightmare on Elm Street 1 and 2 um, The Burning Sleepaway Camp Just Before Dawn um, All of these movies are a, uh, a 15 year 15 to 20 year section of time that can never be you know redone they try it and they do very good, like Fair Street 78 um, is a perfect addition to this genre. 
and yeah so Terror Train 1980 Jamie Lee Curtis um, I loved everything about this movie it is a wonderful sit back in your chair and watch a nice classic slasher film and it should be in every um, horror movie buff or slasher buffs collection is Terror Train and uh, once again I thank you for listening to me yak on about my loves and Terror Train is certainly a love of mine get to see Vanity before she even was a star you get to see David Copperfield and all of his hi I'm 21 cuteness and uh, you get to see the scream, scream queen at her, you know, perfection. So thanks again for joining me and I will be back soon with more. Um, everybody's going to think I live in this Chucky shirt, Charles E. Ray. Everybody's going to think I live in it, but actually I'm just recording a bunch of videos to slowly upload this next week. Uh, when I have a chance when my sinuses aren't killing me and my allergies aren't killing me I'll sit down and go through all this shit sitting around that I want to do and try to knock some of it out of the way lots of content I would like to do and thanks for joining me and I will see you in the next one I hope bye 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 bye